COVID-19 cases are keeping the doors closed at some child care centers. Since March, the state says nearly 3,100 positive cases of COVID-19 have been reported at child care centers across Texas. The vast majority are staff, but more than 1,000 who got the virus are children. It's one of the reasons many of those centers have not reopened, and our investigator Arzo Dost found advocacy groups say some of those centers will never open again. And this has been a classroom that's been empty. No kids, no lessons, no playing. We miss our kids. Main Spring Schools in South Central Austin has been closed since March. And we hope to open again um, soon, but it really depends on the community and how the public health situation looks. The state says nearly 4,800 child care centers, that's about 28% of all facilities in Texas, have closed between February and now and have never reopened. It's a crisis for our state and for our community because access to child care is essential infrastructure for our economy. Kathy McCorse is part of the Austin Travis County COVID-19 Child Care Task Force. She's hearing about low enrollment concerns and higher costs dealing with safety measures like cleaning and sanitizing. The, the cost of providing care safely under COVID conditions is adding costs of to about $300 to $900 per month per child. And that's not sustainable. If they were able to get more funding relief, could you see more opening up? I believe many are, are just looking at their budgets and saying, I, ca I can't afford to open under these conditions. Maine Spring Schools, which serves low-income families, did get a federal loan for $230,000. This is a table full of clothes. Jason Gindell says they used the money to pay for 30 employees, mostly teachers for two months, along with rent and utilities. The nonprofit is fundraising and dipping into savings to help families of students in need. We've begun to box up food, um, diapers. Gindell says, but now it needs a lifeline to survive during this pandemic. I mean, there comes a point where we run out of money and um, we won't be able to continue to pay our teachers. Arzo Dost for State of Texas. Advocacy groups have also been pushing the state to release more information about positive cases at child care centers across Texas. They say that information could help parents make important decisions about sending their child to school or not this fall. A recent Gallup survey says fewer parents want full-time in-person school for their kids this fall. Compared to previous numbers, there's now a growing percentage of parents who want full-time remote learning. But that's proving to be a challenge for many districts in Texas. Our Maggie Glenn looks at the technology troubles that are now popping up getting students access to online learning. First day was today. Esther Spangler's two daughters had laptops provided by their school district, but didn't have internet access. Emma and Eleanor spent their first day sharing their mom's phone. With just the one smartphone, we started one, and then we had to say, after about half an hour, we were like, okay, we have to leave now because the other sister needs to tune in. The school district is working to get the family a hotspot, but the process has been frustrating. I never thought that I'd be in this position where I was like depending on the system. The state is working with school districts uh, to make sure that uh, there will be sufficient both hotspots uh, as well as laptops uh, in any type of technology that is needed to close the digital divide. And already there has been uh, almost a half a billion dollars aggregated for that. While the state has allocated the funding for the devices, that doesn't solve supply chain issues. November 1st is what I'm hearing on the 6,000 Chromebooks that we have on order. Chromebooks are a particular problem. The TEA says they're in high demand across the country. School districts tell us they're the more cost-effective option. Unfortunately, we're in line just like everybody else, and it is going to be a long time. As we start September 1, we may not have all of that technology at our fingertips. According to information sent to school districts, currently there's about a two to four week wait for hotspots. For laptops and iPads, it's about a four to five week wait. And for Chromebooks, the wait is actually about 10 weeks right now. The TEA says that the schools that placed a Chromebook order do have the option to switch to another device if that 10 week wait is simply too long. Maggie Glenn for State of Texas. The presidential ticket is finally set and speakers are locked in for the Democratic National Convention this week. But we're asking why none of the primetime spots are going to someone from a battleground state like Texas. 